This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amel El Matar and Max Gladstone is a conceptual science fiction romance novella about a rivalry between two time-travelling super agents named Red and Blue. In the far, 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 far futures, humanity has figured out time travel and, of course, the technology has been completely co-opted by two powerful rival organisations, the Agency and the Garden. Both of these organizations send their agents back in time to alter the course of history in a way that benefits them in the future, as well as fight and undermine the operatives of the rival agency in a history-spanning war to determine the future. Red is an agent of the agency, and one day on a mission she finds a letter encrypted in such a way that it has to be burned in order to be read. The letter was left by Blue, an agent of the Garden who has just just foiled Red's mission and leaves the message behind as a way of taunting her. So Red decides to get back at Blue by foiling one of her missions and leaving a message encoded in the bubbles of a glass jar of water that can only be read by boiling it. You see, both Red and Blue come from futures where the technology is hyper advanced, to the point that it can be used to manipulate physical reality with monumental precision, which is what they use to influence the timelines. One of the the incredible abilities this gives both of them is they're able to leave each other secret messages encrypted into the precise arrangements of physical objects. The fibers in a piece of paper, the bubbles in a jar of boiling water, the rings of tree stumps, the swirling of leaves in a pot of tea, the patterns in a flowing river of lava, the taste of exotic seeds and other strange things. Red and Blue's relationship is one of escalating one-upsmanship. Blue begins by simply foiling a plan and leaving an ostentatious taunt, so Red must therefore respond with a more impressive foil and a more ostentatious taunt. And it only escalates from there. Pretty much the entire novella is reading through this correspondence between these two rival time travelers as their relationship develops and changes. The time travel isn't explained in detail, but it appears to operate on the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, with branching timelines called strands sort of circumnavigating the grandfather paradox. The book doesn't bother explaining how timeline manipulation works, why manipulating past strands benefits the organizations in the future, or if there are seemingly infinite timelines, why the organizations are still fighting over future outcomes instead of just sitting pretty in separate timelines where they both get what they want. If you're a fan of hard science fiction with consistent, well-explained rules, then you should know going in that this sci-fi romance is more romance than it is sci-fi. The letters being sent back and forth through geomantic steganography, or put simply, encoding them in the physical structure of an object, are ways of literalizing the absolutely saccharine rubbish that poets write to their lovers. I hear your voice in a soft gentle breeze, when I smell the scent of flowers I think of you. It's all just complete romance poetry trash, which, to be clear, I am a huge fan of, but genuinely it is elevated by three things. The first is the sci-fi premise, which allows for this literalization through the, uh, geomantic steganography. The second is the characters of Red and Blue. They've both meddled in historical events and seen entire timelines come and go so often that over the countless centuries they've developed a cynical detachment from it all. When we meet them, they are both cold-hearted, calculating professionals who use the occasional aforementioned ostentatious taunt as their one outlet for fun and enjoyment. However, once they begin to fall in love, they find that they can see the world through a new lens and they get excited by things both profound and mundane. It's very cute. And the third is the novel's writing style, which is incredibly playful. While reading, I got the impression that the authors were totally unrestrained and just writing in whatever way felt appropriate and vivid. It starts out risking feeling pretentious and kind of thesaurus -y, but that's because Red and Blue are trying to outdo and impress each other with the prose in their letters. In retrospect, it's actually kind of funny and really solid characterization. 
and once that's over and the boisterous tone of the writing relaxes a bit, it adjusts into a prose style that's still more complicated than your average novel, but is far more focused on being simply charming and pleasant to read. If you're someone who doesn't typically read complicated prose but are interested in dipping a toe in, this novel is a relatively short, low stakes, thematically straightforward feel-good story about time travelers sending elaborate love letters to each other that is probably a nice showcase of some of the basic things complicated prose can do. It's honestly tempting for me to do a very brief close reading of a passage in this novel, which I may end up doing in the follow-up for Book Club. If you enjoy simple, trashy romance stories with a high concept, then I enthusiastically recommend this book. If you enjoy novels with vivid, playful, and lyrical writing styles, then I can also give this a strong recommendation. However, if you're interested in the novel specifically for the time-traveling science fiction premise, or you're the kind of person who gets annoyed when fiction doesn't follow a consistent set of well-explained rules, then you should probably give this novel a miss. As always, I first strongly recommend that you seek a copy of this novel from a library or a local bookstore, and I've also taken the liberty of putting a list of online book retailers that I recommend in the description of this video. I hope you found this review useful. Book Club for This Is How You Lose The Time War should be in either May or early June, barring extenuating circumstances. So leave me a comment or send an email to my business address before May 10th if you want your feedback to be featured in that video. Thank you very much for watching.